The world's population grew more than 400 percent in the 20th century and is heading toward 10 billion by 2050. Feeding ever-increasing numbers of people created unintended consequences for the landscape. Soil degradation and water problems threaten the very asset that provides food. The Grand River Basin is a microcosm. Land described just 200 years ago as a garden spot and wildlife haven is now heavily farmed and one of the largest pollution sources on U.S. waterways. And it's daunting because the Grand, when you look at it for the large drainage basins, it's around 20th for uh, nutrients into the uh, entire Mississippi. What are the signs of erosion that you see? Oh, uh, where you got a lot of gullies. Erosion is readily visible on highly erodible land within the 7,900 square mile Grand River watershed. Nutrient runoff, evident where farmers plant row crops up to the water's edge. These images are a call to do things differently. To change land that looks like this, to this, helping the environment, wildlife habitat, and providing landowners with income. We need to recognize that what we're doing can be improved upon. Together we can make significant improvements and leave a legacy to our children that is hope, not about a continuous degrading of our landscape. Raceline organized the Grand River Conference, hosted at Smithfield Hog Productions, Missouri headquarters, to plant the seeds for a 200,000-acre pilot program in the Grand River Basin. Problems of sustainability are global, but solutions are local. The vision is to reduce runoff by strategically planting native prairie buffers in upland fields, riparian areas near waterways, and cover crops. All that can be harvested as a renewable energy crop. We have to think about cover crops as an economic tool. We can harvest it. We just want to be careful we're not harvesting it in April, right? We want to grow roots and harvest it third to fourth week of May and then put soybeans in like middle of May. The best place for biofuel actually is right where we're standing here, in the whole country. The idle and available productivity and integrating it over a, a region. Landowners would also be in line for environmental incentive programs and conservation program funding. Strong riparian zone function, grassy buffers, forested buffers can have real outcomes for sediment loading, lower loadings of phosphorus into the system. So just something to keep in mind as we think, how do we take into account the large Grand River watershed? I look at things as a modular approach of integrating. We are doing that with this. Coalesce around a plan that I think could be slowly spread across the landscape and, and change how we're doing things today. The pilot project connects to other environmental initiatives in northern Missouri. We don't talk about sustainability. We do. Raceline Alternative Energy is working on a large project at Smithfield's nine northern Missouri farms to convert manure to renewable gas. Native prairie and cover crop vegetation can also be used in anaerobic digestion systems to create renewable natural gas. We are really working on this. We're, we're not only talking about it, we're dedicating assets, we're dedicating resources. This should be more of a model that can be adopted by other companies. Two prairie restoration initiatives are underway at Smithfield's Northern Missouri Operations. A 1,000-acre project funded by the Smithfield Foundation focuses on the water and wildlife benefits of natural prairie on land where row crop production is not appropriate. We're really excited about the progress that we're making. Large corporations like Smithfield are making initiatives to reduce their carbon footprint, but I think we need to show them a pathway that works, that doesn't cost them money, but actually saves them money. Raceline's 1,700-acre northern Missouri farm is an example of what's possible, where prairie buffers around lakes, contour strips on erodible cropland, and cover crops are producing visible results. The practices all focus on three key drivers, renewable energy production, ecological services, and wildlife habitat. A holistic solution ensures all three areas receive maximum benefits. Emphasizing one over another would create additional unintended consequences. Raceline's vision is that 200,000 acres in northern Missouri will become 30 million acres across the U.S., a holistic and market-based alternative to current land use practices. We wanted to share that visual, not to indict what's going on, but to just ask ourselves, can we do better? How do we collaborate together to do better?